Hi everyone, this is Manuel Azic talking from my couch in London with another episode of You Gotta Act, a podcast about actors and acting. And today my guest is writer, director, actor, Dustin Guy de Fay. <laughs> Hi Dustin. Hello. Thanks for talking to us. Um, yeah. Again, uh, you are based in New York, I think, right? right As now? of Tuesday, oh, yeah, I, there was a big gap, but yes, I'm back now. Right, lovely. Uh, I seem to be talking to a lot of Americans on this podcast, which I guess is because that's where the movies are made. Um, so, Dustin, you've chosen to uh, talk about Nicole Kidman, which is a very cool choice and interesting choice, obviously. Um, but before we get to talk about her a bit, um, can you tell us a bit more about your own journey through cinema, filmmaking? How did you get to be a director and an actor and everything like that? Um, yeah, how do you... Uh, I'll try to keep it brief, I guess. I don't... Uh, um, I mean, I've always been interested in movies and um, I um, I made movies when I was a child. And so... But, you know, it takes a while, I think took a while to figure out that it was something you could do mm -hmm. um, for for your life. Um, um, and I made a lot of things when I was a kid and a teenager and so forth. Um, and then and then I just started making things that I actually sort of liked a little bit more and you know a couple short films that I think were okay and then I made my feature bad fever um but that sort of like i think that my own trajectory and my own timeline does coincide with a lot of other american filmmakers um mm -hmm. the mumble course scene and things like this i mean are there, it's sort of all timed the same that those are all timed so mm -hmm. um so i think i mean for me i i mean and i think this might be for a lot of people when I saw Funny Ha Ha and um, Mutual Appreciation by Andrew Bujowski, that was sort of a a turning point, I think. I mean, I don't know what else was going on for other people like Swanberg or the Duplass Brothers and things. I don't know if they had already made something by the time they saw one of those movies. Um, but I think for a lot of us seeing those movies get was a light bulb got came off like, oh, movies with no money, movies with just your friends. Mm -hmm. um, so that definitely spurred me into making my first feature, which is Bad Fever. And um and yeah, from there it's been it's been it has been this it has been mostly that situation of no money and making movies with friends. And um mm -hmm. and in fact it's really become more it's become the the ground of everything in a way and i think it's also been the ground for a lot of people that i'm talking about the same kind of um um community um, mm -hmm. um but but you know now now a lot of those people in that community are very successful and have gone into the industry so the industry is sort of has been sort of flooded with i think that community of people Um, which is very exciting. And I don't know, I mean, it feels like that flood of people, it has changed the industry for the better and made it more intimate and closer knit. But I don't know if that's an illusion or not. I can't really tell. I still mm -hmm. sort of feel like I'm on the outside of the industry. Um, I am, I am on the outside of the industry and I, I don't know if I will actually <clears throat> penetrate it or not. But, But I think before funny ha ha mutual appreciation my my mind was still about the industry and about mm -hmm. the studio i mean when you know growing up i thought you know i mean the growing up the dream was to make a movie at a studio mm -hmm. and now that dream doesn't even really exist anymore i mean the studios those studios i mean now there's the new studios that are the small studios but those big studios i don't i don't even know if i have that dream i think that dream might be just completely gone mm. Which yeah, is, which is great. I mean, because they're not they're not the same places as they were when I was young. Mm. It's funny. I I just watched Mank last night, the David Fincher film, and the whole studio situation. Mm. But like we're talking, obviously, golden age of Hollywood, and uh, yeah, it's completely inconceivable today. I mean, not that I have much experience, obviously, with Hollywood, but like the the idea of you know 
a team of screenwriters working together to make one film and they are like just exchanging ideas freely and they know that they will make a lot of films that year it seems so so ridiculous but we can dream i guess <laughs> yeah yeah i mean and you know the heads of the studios i think actually understood movies in some way not even that they were creative people but at least i think they cared about audiences in some kind of way and i don't mm. even think nowadays all that really matters are the tickets being sold and i don't think there's the idea of people behind those tickets whatsoever so mm. you know yeah it seems like now we talk about audiences as you know a territory like we we're addressing the European territory and it's like, is it just a piece of land or is there other people there? So yeah, I see what you mean. Um, so you chose to talk about Nicole Kidman and you yourself are, are an actor as well. So I was wondering what made you choose Nicole Kidman and maybe when was the first time you noticed her and noticed that maybe she was uh, an interesting actor to you? I mean, well, the, I think the first, I mean, the, the first, the first time I definitely saw Nicole Kidman was in a movie called Dead Calm, which is actually her breakthrough movie. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, when you see a breakthrough person, well, nowadays when I see a breakthrough person, I'm just, I'm like, wow. And then I have hesitation because there's so many breakthrough people and then their careers just don't go the way I would like, you know, they're not, they don't have exciting careers. A lot of people just mm -hmm. have a breakthrough and then they start doing movies that I don't like. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, it happens uh and that happens a lot where i really think i'm just so excited by an actor actress and i i really just want the best for them in their career but um i mean you know she did a couple she did so she so nicole kidman did you know she did dead calm and then and then her real bigger bigger breakthrough was with um i mean she was visibly more seen in Days of Thunder. That was called Days of Thunder. The Tom yeah. Tom Cruise. And I think they were already dating at that point or something. Mm -hmm. um, and then she did Far and Away with him also. But yeah. you know, those. It's not like she's more interesting in Deadcom. And then it's not like I found her to be completely amazing mm -hmm. until To Die For, the Gus Van Sant movie, mm -hmm. which felt different. It's our, that's where she starts feeling different, but. Then, then of course, Eyes Wide Shut is, I think, the real turning point. And I don't know about her and Tom Cruise's marriage and exactly. I don't think anyone knows. Of, like, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, but I don't know. Like, that's near the end of their. I mean, that that is. Yeah. Like, I want to think that maybe that's the that movie's like a catalyst for the end of their marriage. But it's, but you, for me, it, you don't start to see her change like into what I would consider Nicole Kidman until Eyes Wide Shut and then after their marriage is mm. over, which is, you know, I think revealing, yeah, yeah, revealing <laughs> of, their, of probably their marriage. Maybe, yeah. who knows? You know, you want to think yeah. these things, but you know, I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, I, I read that in uh, when, because the making of Eyes Wide Shut was notoriously very long. It took something like almost two years or something. And um, there was a lot of, talk and gossip around the production and some people said that because <laughs> Tom Cruise's and uh, Nicole Kidman's sex life was so bad they had to hire um, a, a couples therapist for the sex scenes oh, in the wow. film which is so <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> like and the fact that this film was so problematic because of its sex scenes today seems ridiculous but anyway um, yeah it seems like that film was a difficult time for them but anyway but I, I know what you mean okay. about her really becoming Nicole Kidman with that film and I think like you said it was kind of predicted in To Die For where she plays a very duplicitous person or like not really duplicitous because she's obviously crazy but uh, <laughs> she's a very manipulative person and I think the whole point of Nicole Kidman for me is that she looks she can look perfectly proper like regular like a you know typical white American woman which is funny because she's Australian uh, but in reality, she has this intelligence, wickedness to her that obviously in To Die For, where she plays this um, um, TV presenter who wants to be famous at any cost, it's very clear. And it's based on a true story, which obviously is it's highly fictionalized, but it's very clear in that film. Whereas in the whole point of Eyes Wide Shut is that Tom Cruise's character realizes that women are complex <laughs> and, <laughs> and she can play that in this way where... When you first meet them, 
uh, when they are preparing to go to that party, they seem just like a perfect couple, like a movie couple. You know, obviously they have the, the height difference, but that's whatever. Um, but they seem like chic, beautiful, the doctor, the beautiful wife, they have a daughter and everything. And then after the party, when they smoke this joint together and oh, they have yeah. this exchange, she reveals that there's so much more going on inside her. And I think Nicole Kidman in that part, everything she's done since has kind of been about revealing the mm. depth of her complexity. I can agree with that. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's yeah. funny. I mean, it's funny that it's on camera in a way that reveal, I mean, cause that, and her, that monologue is just, that is, I mean, that, yeah, I think what you're saying and I agree with is that I really do think that monologue is just sort of like the first time we're really, I mean, I do think we do see it in to die for, but there is something where, you, where it's, Oh, this, this is this person is this person. I mean, she's really, deeper she's very very i I do find nicole kimmon to be very deep um mm. and of course that scene is just a real bombshell yeah. it's incredible it's amazing i love the way i love the way the camera goes with her in that moment as well there's this very famous you know it's it's all it's kind of handheld in that moment and when she doubles up laughing the camera just follows her as she does that. And it kind of re-emphasizes the yeah. fact that now we are shifting to her perspective. And we are like, oh, if you men only knew. And it's it's so powerful. And obviously, that's that's the trigger of the whole film. Yeah, yeah, totally. And it's funny because me, my first proper encounter with Nicole Kidman was with Moulin Rouge, <laughs> which sure, is quite a different yeah. register. But it's uh, it's two years after Eyes Wide Shut. It's 2001. Oh, really? And it seems like it's so much... Okay, wow. Yeah, right. and it's like after she's divorced from Tom Cruise as well. Whatever. And uh, <laughs> and in that in that film, she, she kind of plays on the stereotype of... You know, it's a very typical story of like the pure, beautiful woman who, oh no, she's like a poor woman, but she finds love, but then she dies. It's like very typical. And she plays that, you know, in the register, but also with her Kidman quality, which is being witty and being funny. And she sings and she's great. Yeah. <laughs> and for me, that was like Nicole Kidman when I was growing up. I watched that from too many times and I know all the songs. Yeah, I, I also did too. That's what's weird. I've, I've seen it. I don't, I haven't seen it in a long time, but I feel like I haven't memorized. Yeah. And I wonder if it's still, uh, do you, I mean, I don't, I have a feeling it's not as good as I, how much I, I did for some reason <laughs> i really did love it when it came out mm. so i think it's a very it's a baz Luhrmann film so it's a very um powerful film you know you if you like it you love it if you don't like yeah. it you're probably disgusted but <laughs> if you yeah. if yeah. i think if you can be on board with it i think it really works and and in that film they really emphasize her paleness they make her super pale they make her re wear red to really have this colorful like duality of you know blood and pain and passion and paleness purity blah 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 and I think she's the best cast for that and and you know I also really like her because she's very tall and yet she's a movie star <laughs> which yeah. like for a woman is difficult and uh, yeah that that film for me was peak and also it's the same year I'm guessing it came out to promote the film but she did a duet with Robbie Williams <laughs> where she sang oh, something okay. stupid. <laughs> Which is like that's my version of something stupid, which is ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, I think at that moment she was peak. She was really doing her best work, or the be one version of her work that was very good. Yeah, I, I mean, I think she's person. I mean, I think she's one. I mean, one big reason why I really adore her is simply just her the risks she's taken in her career because you don't mm. see you don't see a lot of stars of her caliber doing the kinds of roles that she does and it's not like she does a lot of them but she mm. at least does them and she, i feel like she puts her full force in them i'm talking about like dogville and i'm talking about birth and i'm talking about even and i'm talking even the role in big little lies and yeah. i think you don't in America, I mean, like, I feel like a comparable person is is Isabel Hubert, who does mm -hmm. more risky movies and more things. But I feel like in I feel like the only sort of Isabel Hubert we have over here is Nicole Kidman, 
because I don't see, I can't think of another person who does, who takes the, the risk she does. And again, I don't think she does it a lot, but when she does do them, I think those are her best roles. And in fact, mm. I don't, it's not like I, I'm always happy to see Nicole Kidman in a movie, but I love her more in the movies where she does do something more risky. I mean, I love mm. Paddington a lot, you know, yeah. Padd- I mean, it's such a great movie, but I also don't necessarily, it's, it's still not my my favorite Nicole Kidman is 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 the more the more risk taker version mm. because in a weird in a strange way it feels like she's more comfortable doing the risk than anything else in anything else I've seen her seen her in it's always the risk where she gets to do the riskier things where she feels the most comfortable which is very interesting yeah and I feel like when you see American movie stars generally do risks there's an uncomfortability factor or they just don't go they don't there's something stopping them from going all the way. Mm-hmm. Whereas I feel like she just, she really does seem like she embraces it completely and goes full force all the way. Yeah. Um, I think her, I, I just think her career is, is very beautiful that way where I feel like she's, I can only imagine that she's seeked out these kinds of roles and, and sort of look for these kind of directors Mm. where she can be taking these risks. And I don't, I really just don't think a lot of movie stars do that kind of thing. I think they get into a comfortable zone and stay yeah. in that comfortable zone because they don't need to do anything. Mm. Um, uncom- yeah, like, uh, you know, they don't, don't need to take risks for, at all. Yeah. That will pay off for like, it's, it doesn't feel like Dogville is like a attempt to get an Oscar, you know, like it's more like she wanted to do a crazy filmed play with last one Trier, and it works and it's, Honestly, I think it's one of my favorite last one trios and I really like his yeah. work. Yeah. But I think there's something in that film and with her being in it and you know, I think it's I don't know if it's the first one, but I think it's one of his first, you know, international films. And even though he at that point he could get international actors, like he still made a really weird one, really weird film. And the fact that she was in that and you're right, I think, about the Isabelle Huppert comparison. Like, for instance, when Isabelle Huppert did Elle with uh, yeah. um, Verhoeven, a lot of actresses turned down that role. Like, a lot of... The reason why he Verhoeven made the film in Europe is because no American actors wanted to do that. And I get the same feeling from Kinman in Dogville, which is, you know, it's a very demanding part, and it's a very humiliating role, because that's what Von Trier is all about, kind of. But in a, such an interesting and bigger way like it really is a film about community and the meaning of life in a way and the fact that she could take that on and be Nicole Kidman like it's the same woman that did you know commercial stuff or you know like Moulin Rouge or whatever and she can take that and and really be the star of it that that movie just flows me every time yeah I haven't seen it in a long time but I remember it being really amazing I think I would still really love it if I watched it it's funny, like every time it's raining, I want to watch Dogville. I don't know what that says about me, but it just feels like such a good, um, you know, when things feel a bit dark and you want to see a film about society breaking down, this is the one. I was just going to say, when you see her in these in these in the movies that we're talking about, the risk the riskier movies, it doesn't feel like a it's not a career move or anything like that. Mm. You know, I think a lot of people also do in America they do the risky movie for a career move, and like you said, like like maybe even trying to win some awards. And I feel mm-hmm. like she's just drawn to these things and she just completely 100% goes for them. But I also want to say, like, I can't, it's funny, yeah, I could not imagine any other American actress being an L other than Nicole Kidman. I mean, maybe there is somebody, but, like, she would actually work in that role. I mean, she would, it would yeah. make a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. And in a way, it's kind of what she does in Big Little Lies, if you think about it. I mean, it's not the same, but it's a similar kind of situation for a woman to be in, in a, in a you know, popular, semi, I mean, I guess L is popular, I don't know, in like a, you know, fairly big production. Um, but yeah. And then also another film she took a risk in is Birth, which is one of the three films yeah. you told me that was your focus. And again, that's another favorite film of mine. I could watch it endlessly. And I read that the pro- obviously the problematic aspect of this film, so it's a film about a woman uh, called Anna, whose husband has passed some years prior, and one day a little boy walks up to her and he says, I'm Sean, I'm your husband. And that sounds like the worst film ever when you say it like this. <laughs> it sounds ridiculous. Um, but somehow in the hands of uh, Jonathan Glazer, 
and with Nicole Kidman, it works perfectly. And the problematic aspect in that is obviously that there, be, there comes a kind of, it feels super reductive to call it that, but it's kind of a romantic tension between this grown-up woman and this 10-year-old boy. And the big controversy was that when the film was in festivals, there's this scene where she goes and has a bath with the boy. And I read that in a press conference, I think in Venice, Nicole Kidman said, I didn't make this film to like kiss a 10-year-old boy. I did it because I wanted to make a film about the meaning of love. And I think she couldn't have said it better because it really is a film about love and grief. And it's funny because like, at the same time, I can see how someone could say, oh, this is a risky part. But at the same time, if you look at it, there's nothing really crazy going on. It's just a woman going through something and talking to a little boy. But the fact that this kind of performance is considered extremely risky in Hollywood is, is kind of sad. Um, yeah, but that well, she would take it is good. Yeah, it is sad. And, but, and I think the reason that it is like that is because in our system, there just aren't a lot of there just aren't a lot of actors willing to do these kinds of things, even though it's not, again, yeah, it's not, it doesn't feel like a risk, but here it is a mm. risk. I think because I, I, well, I don't even know what the, I don't know why that is. I think either we've just gotten so sensitive as a movie going, going culture here or something where we've just sort of taken out all the, all the fun. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, it's, confu it is, it is confusing, but you don't, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't consider it a risk either, but I think the people, the problem that people have with that Bastion, I think it's not even just the Bastion, it's just overall that there is sort of like a chemistry between those two people. I mean, it's not, mm -hmm. I wouldn't, it, I don't know how it was built and I don't, I wouldn't call it sexual chemistry or anything like that, but there is a, a love chemistry of some sort. And she's mm -hmm. having this, she's having a romantic slash loving, at least loving connection to this, little boy and it's not mother to son or anything like that it is like lover to lover in a way so i mm. think that is where people get uncomfortable mm. just with that idea um but yeah in, in terms of europe versus america this that movie is not <laughs> yeah. not a risky it's not a risky like, movie france makes films like that every other day you know? yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> it's totally acceptable well clearly um, and clearly we don't but i mean we I think we do sometimes, but they don't start. They don't have movie stars in them, you know. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I don't want to sound like you know American cinema is boring and stuff. That's not the case, yeah. clearly. But but, but yeah. also, but I think when we do have them, it's so, it is that's what that's what I also think is like sometimes if we do have that happening, it is a career move where somebody doesn't mm. their their sort of their career is either near the end or or like the the spotlight sort of moving, and so the move is to do this is to do a risky move mm, like a, a movie comeback. to get yeah to get to, to get them back in the spotlight and so it's a career yeah. move whereas i just really do feel like i mean nicole Kidman, i don't she it appears that she's never done that mm. it feels like she's always been around as well like i mean i, I yeah. growing up in the 90s for me she was just nicole Kidman. like yeah. when i was trying to think when's the first time i saw her i said moulin rouge but it's probably not that it's probably whatever I saw on TV where she was there and she's just, just Nicole Kidman. And it's yeah. amazing that she's uh, never really had a pause in her career and always has managed to do some very interesting stuff. Obviously every once in a while there's like less interesting things, but. Um, I mean, she has lots of, yeah, she has lots of very uninteresting things, but. Yeah. 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 I rewatched Cold Mountain a while ago mm. and I remember liking it when I first saw it, but then no, not really. <laughs> um, but you know, the spirit is there. She's very good in it. Um, yeah, it, what I really like in Birth as well, there's this very amazing scene when she goes, the very famous scene when she goes to the opera, I think, and it's yeah. that close up on her when she cries, essentially. And um, I don't know, there's just something about her, it's going to sound basic, but like her face that can really hold the camera. And she's got this very composed attitude that she can have, where in this film, she in Birth, she plays someone who's we don't know that much about her. We All we know is that she's grieving and she's sad and she's about to get married to Danny Houston, who seems like kind of a not great guy. Um, but she seems to have so much going on inside even before she meets the little boy. And again, it's what, what you were saying about her death. And I think she always, beyond the beautiful blonde woman, 
there's so much more going on. And mm. if you made birth someone less interesting, I think it could seem so silly. And so yes. such yeah. a faux pas, but with her, it really works. I mean, that that's a very hard role to pull off for sure. I mean, to, mm. to, to try to navigate how to emotionally under believe the bo- like figure out i mean slowly believe the boy and get into this situation i mean that's really hard you're right i mean mm-hmm. if with somebody else it just doesn't it could easily fall um yeah fall and the little boy is always is, is really good as well he's a yeah. i think his name is cameron bright he's still acting but he's incredible in that film um yeah yeah um then another film i saw with her later was at uh, in high school i saw australia which uh in yeah, the never, film, the I've actually never seen it. <laughs> I mean, you don't really need to. <laughs> they pronounce it Australia in the film because it's like old Australian. Uh, that's obviously like the big reunion between all the big Australian actors. So it's her and Hugh Jackman. Um, it's another Baz Luhrmann film, so it's not really. I mean, I, I, as much as I like Moulin Rouge, I don't really like Australia. Um, but she again, she's really good in it. She's really witty. Um, then something even more risky. I mean, much more risky than that is the Paperboy. Uh, oh, yeah. from 2012 which um, everybody should see um, yeah this, well, this, is my whole, this is so weird because how much I love Nicole Kidman this is I, every anytime I mention I, I really love Nicole Kidman often I am told well have you seen Paperboy and I have not seen Paperboy which is so strange <laughs> I mean I don't want to spoil it for you you need to see it I mean I've seen I know, but... I know I know how she is in the movie I've seen clips and I know she's just really just far out and yeah <laughs> so strange and and um I, I I know all that's happening, so mm. I just it's I kind of like experimental. Yeah, it's it, she really takes it far, and I think that's the whole point of the film. You know, it's based on this sort of pulpish novel and all that, but she really goes for it. And it's like you were saying, like she no holds barred. She goes for it. It's ridiculous at times. It's there's this one scene where she has this interesting interaction with John Cusack, um, and you just don't know if it's funny or if it's like really great like great cinema and i think we'll never know but whatever we decide about that she's amazing in it and uh again i can't think of any other actress doing that actually it's funny i can think of one other actress and she's australian and it's naomi watts and i think they studied yeah, in yeah, the yeah, same yeah. school in australia yeah i think they were um, roommates or something yeah yeah and um and when i see naomi watts in twin peaks for instance some stuff she right. does in Twin Peaks or even right. in Melon and Drive. It reminds me of that. And uh, yeah, it's interesting. It seems That's like right. Australians right. can yeah. do it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But actually, apart from that, um, I can't think of anyone else really. And then, so what's the most recent thing you saw? And do you say Big Little Lies? You think? Well, I last night I watched Destroyer just so I could, um, because I hadn't seen it yet. I felt mm. like my big two holes were the paper boy and Destroyer. So I, 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 I almost wish I had, chosen paper boy just so i could know what that's like right but she's so good in destroyer that i'm very happy i saw it and she's incredible i haven't seen that one yet she's just incredible um i actually didn't think it was i i saw i mean it was a decent movie so yeah it's a decent movie and she's amazing Mm. um does she play like a cop in it or yeah she's a yeah she's a cop with sort of a uh, a vengeance out for somebody mm. from her past, um, and you know she sort of transformed herself. Which, yeah, she sort yeah. of transformed herself, and she looks. There must be some prosthetic stuff happening, um, which she never. Yeah, she doesn't do often. I mean, I know she did it for the hours, and she won the Oscar for the hours. But I remember not liking that movie very much. But mm. that's usually that's <laughs> usually what happens with Oscar. The, the the yeah, usually when your fa- one of your favorite actors win an oscar it's in their one of their weak movies yeah <laughs> usually happens yeah um uh, i really liked her in big little lies as much as yeah I, the, um it's a, it's such a again a very challenging part so she plays this woman called celeste wright who he's married to seemingly happily married to some man played by um skarsgård Ale- Ale- yeah alexander alexander skarsgård it's one of those <laughs> Uh, not the old one, the young one, and um, and they seem very happy. They have twin boys, I think, and they're all blonde. Whatever they live in California somewhere, and they're rich. Uh, but we find out that not everything is going well in the marriage. The husband has some terrible, very troubling 
anger issues and um and it's a very graphic show i mean it's it's yeah. difficult if i'm guessing for some people to watch and we see her going through this abuse and then trying to still get some kind of report with her husband some kind of respect which is extremely tough to watch that's the kind of the toughest part to see what she does after and i think she handles it amazingly it's never it never judges her it never judges I mean, it does judge him, but it doesn't judge him in, as in, like, he's a monster kind of thing. There's a real elegance to the show, and mm-hmm. and her performance yeah. is brilliant because she, she shows one side to her friends, and she shows another yeah. side to yeah. her husband and to her therapist eventually. Yeah, I think she's... I mean, I, I thought that show... I didn't see... I watched, you know, two episodes of season two. But, uh, they're not that good <laughs> season yeah. two is not the same <laughs> but 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 that season one is so i really really liked it a lot and i think she was the best part of it i mean i think she was just so incredible in in that in that role and it it felt like a tour de force for her for that i mean it just felt like and that's the nicole kibben that i am most fond of is that is that is that is that part and um yeah she's so good in that in that show mm. She really brings it, and because of the story of the character, she has to go. She has to have a big range, and I guess I think mm-hmm. this role gets to show that. It's it's interesting also because a lot of TV shows or like mini series that come out these days, I feel like they could be movies, but I think for Big Little Lies, at least season one, uh, you really get the sense that exploring those people, those women, and their relationships through time, gets to. Like it lets you see a lot of what's going on, and also when you have great actresses like them, especially Nicole, they have so much to do. And I guess maybe that answers what we were saying about like where are the risky movies? Maybe it's now this ris- risky TV. Yeah, maybe know. that's right. Yeah, mm. yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah she... that's true. That's true. Yeah, for here at least, yes, for sure. Yeah, and she's just on that new show, new mini series that I haven't seen uh, yeah. called The Undoing with doing, Hugh yeah. Grant but I haven't seen it yet because I don't know it's some some on some cable channel here or something like that not cable obviously it doesn't exist but something like that and um I haven't seen it but I've heard that similarly she's uh striking and apparently she has different wigs all the time <laughs> which is interesting but um yeah so yeah she keeps going she's been doing this since she was 16 I think she started acting when she was around 16 and she's still doing it and she's still killing it so and even without Tom Cruise <laughs> she's thriving definitely without Tom Cruise. <laughs> I mean, we we don't know what the yeah we don't know what the career would have been uh, if she had stayed in the marriage. That's for sure. Yeah, and it's a kind of interesting. I mean, obviously they're very different people, but to see where he went with acting and where she went with acting. I mean, obviously you know when you're a man and a woman, I guess it's different in in Hollywood. But and also he got to be Tom Cruise somehow, which. Uh, you know, as much as I like Nicole Kidman, like, I'm guessing Tom Cruise is more famous if you compare. But um, yeah, it's interesting what it means to be a successful, an extremely successful actor and a successful actress. And I think she, she's got a perfect example of that in terms of, you know, working continuously and doing interesting things. Yeah. And instead he's like stuck doing Mission Impossible, which is great, but like, that's a... It's kind of what he's doing now. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I don't want to. I like Tom Cruise a lot. I mean, I really think I really true. enjoy watching him. Um, but even in terms of, I mean, if you compare, like, it's it's interesting if you compare like Tom Cruise on the Oprah show, you know, when he's jumping up on the couch with the, the Katie yeah. Holmes thing, yeah. with like have you seen the video of nicole kimmon and keith urban in the in the car when they're singing no i don't think i have i mean i mean that that video is so it's like i mean i think it's like a minute and a half maybe two minutes they're singing along to one of his songs oh and you know even when you see them together nicole kimmon and keith urban you you just like you can see that they love each other so much and it actually is authentic and real you can see it and in this video you really see it and it feels embarrassed the video is hard to watch because it feels <laughs> it's very i don't i can't think of an, a more intimate sort of 
video of famous people. I mean, maybe, you know, I, I've never, I haven't seen sex tapes of people, but like, if you like, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, put those, let's put those over here. Other than that, different category. You know, anything where you see two celebrities showing their love together, there's something, for some reason, it still feels manufactured almost always. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. They always know the camera is there. Yeah. And in this car, they do know the camera is there, of course, but they're, but they seem to go into another place where the camera is no longer there. Yeah. And it's, it's very embarrassing <laughs> and so intimate. And it's so hard. It really is very hard to watch because of how intimate it is there. Mm-hmm. She is very dorky, but they're, it's so clear that they are real with each other and they love each other. And that's, I, we just don't get to see that kind of thing. And then if you just yeah. think, I mean, then you just jump to the Tom Cruise jumping on the couch and it's like, okay. <laughs> Quite a contrast. Yeah, I've, I've read a few gossipy things about how every time someone sees Nicole Kinman with Keith Urban, they're just like teenagers in love, which is yes, amazing. Right. They do um, seem like, they, yes, in this car, they are very much like teenagers. That's right. Right. And, you know, I'm very happy for her because she deserves it. And uh, there's also those famous pictures, I think, of when she got out of the courtroom when she divorced Tom Cruise and she's just like with her arms up like looking at the sky which is yeah. quite dramatic but I can imagine I'm guessing but anyway we're not here to talk about the private lives but yeah Nicole Kidman is great and she's happy and she's doing great work and that's what counts and she's still yeah she's still super interesting and I think throughout her career she's done so many different interesting films like I was thinking again about The Portrait of a Lady which yeah. uh directed by Jane Campion, which I saw a long time ago. But again, in that film, she wasn't super big yet. It's 96. And she's incredible. Like she's, she really captures that. Again, it's a complex woman in a time when she had women were not very free and all that, but she captures this great complexity, which I think in period films is um, sometimes what's missing. Sometimes, you know, period film women are reduced to very simplistic oppressed people and in that film because of the henry james story as well but because of campion's directing and kidman's acting you get the sense that there's a real soul in that situation that's trying to to live something yeah i barely remember that yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. i remember the piano i mean i remember the piano very vividly mm-hmm. but that movie i believe i can't i mean i remember it being a very beautiful movie yeah mm. There's a very young Viggo Mortensen as well in it, which is quite striking. Yeah. Um, anything, any final thoughts on Nicole Kidman? I, I just don't, I mean, I know she's appreciated, but I just think she's sort of it's strangely underappreciated mm. for who she is and what she's sort of given to us. I, I, yeah, I, I don't know if I have further thoughts than that. Mm. That's, that's a nice thought to end on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's great. And I'm sure she's going to be working for many more years and it's going to show up with Keith Urban being happy again a lot of times. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, Dustin, for your time. This was a lovely conversation about Nicole Kidman. And um, yeah, watch uh, The Paperboy ASAP. Oh, yes, I know. Yes, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> You're not going to regret it. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. See you. Thanks for listening to or watching this episode of You Gotta Act. If you wish to know in advance who our next guest will be and ask them a question, become a friend of You Gotta Act on Patreon. See you next time.